I am not in Huntsville, Alabama right now, not really. And that is not really a space shuttle. I shall explain. There were six space shuttle orbiters, Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. This is Pathfinder, and it's not really an orbiter. This is a mock-up of a space shuttle, but unlike most other fake shuttles, this one played an important role in the space shuttle program. Pathfinder's story starts in 1977 when the space shuttle Enterprise was built. Enterprise was originally intended to be named Constitution, but Star Trek fans petitioned then-President Gerald Ford to name it Enterprise instead. While it's kind of cool that the first reusable space vehicle was named after the starship from the Star Trek television series, it's not so cool that the space shuttle Enterprise never actually went into space. Enterprise flew by piggybacking on the back of a specially equipped Boeing 747, then detaching at the right moment before gliding back to land. Landing the space shuttle is one of the most difficult and dangerous elements of having a reusable space plane, so while Enterprise never went to space, it was the first shuttle to fly in the atmosphere, which is the whole point of the space shuttle to begin with. Enterprise was built in 1977, and the second orbiter, Columbia, the first one to actually launch, wouldn't be built until 1979. In order to test all of the equipment at NASA that was used in conjunction with the shuttle, the cranes, gantries, lifting and transport apparatus, they decided against using the $1.5 billion orbiter Enterprise, and instead had a facsimile made from wood and steel. The facility's test article was designed to be the same size, shape and weight as the real shuttle and could be hauled around NASA without fear of damaging the only real orbiter in existence. After testing was complete, the facility's test article was shoved into storage where it collected dust for many years. It was eventually sold to a consortium of Japanese businessmen who paid a small fortune to have the space shuttle shaped box refurbished to look more like a real space shuttle and put it on display in Tokyo for a year or so. It was at this point the facility's test article was christened Pathfinder. In 1988, Pathfinder found its way back to the United States and returned to Huntsville, Alabama where it was originally built in 1977. The fake orbiter with a real history was mounted on top of an external tank and two real solid rocket boosters. And until the shuttle Endeavour is mounted in its new display, display position in the California Science Center, Pathfinder remains the only full-size shuttle on display in full-stack configuration. Pathfinder is also the only non-orbiter to have an orbiter vehicle designation. Pathfinder has the unofficial, honorary and retroactive orbiter vehicle designation of OV-098, a number it inherited from the external tank it sits on. The tank was originally part of another test device, the Main Propulsion Test Article, designation MPTA-098, which is essentially the butt end of a space shuttle attached to a scaffold, which was used to test the main engines of the shuttle. The tank that housed the liquid fuel for that test article was MPTA-ET, or the Main Propulsion Test Article External Tank, and it's the tank that now sits underneath Pathfinder. So Pathfinder's OV number comes from the tank's previous owner, the Main Propulsion Test Article. So that is Pathfinder. There are a number of shuttles that aren't shuttles, but this is the one that's most important. This video was made with the support of the Parker family of Georgia, whose generosity and hospitality allowed us to visit the United States earlier this year and see, among other things, the US Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, where we got up close and personal with Pathfinder and the many other amazing things on display. If and only if you think I've earned it, please consider hitting the subscribe button, that way you won't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching. So one more thing on the subject of space shuttles, just because of where I am right now. This is where I was when I found out that the space shuttle Columbia had broken up on re-entry back in 2003. I was about to go fishing uh, with my dad on this river in a little boat. Uh, I actually have some really embarrassing old video footage of that actual day and that actual fishing trip, which I'll put here so you can watch. Um, yeah, I remember thinking at the time when I found out what had happened to Columbia that uh, it was obviously fairly significant and it kind of felt like the end of the space shuttle program because while it was successful in what it did, like looking, looking at the numbers, it wasn't that great. 135 missions, two of which ended in fairly chronic disaster, 40% failure rate across five vehicles, but uh, and little did I know at the time that it would continue for another seven years. The shuttle program didn't terminate until... 2011, but uh, yeah, here I was and here I am again. I'll uh, catch you around, see you next time.